Hello and welcome to Huawei Connect Live one to one. I'm here with Philip Diamond, who is the Director General of the Square Kilometer Array, or SKA. Thank you for coming, Philip. You're welcome, sir. And um, so really to get things started, I'd like to ask, so could you describe SKA and what exactly does it mean for the ordinary people? So the, the SKA, the Square Kilometer Array, is a next generation radio telescope. It, it'll, it will be the most advanced uh, radio telescope on Earth. Wow. Um, and it's, uh, the motivation for building the SKA is to do science, mm. to understa understand uh, things uh, like the origin of the universe, the origin of stars and galaxies, uh, the nature of gravity, etc. That, that's, that's why we're building the SKA. It's not well known, but radio astronomers develop Wi-Fi that we all use every day. Uh, but we're looking at uh, other, other innovations to come in areas like telecommunications, uh, global positioning satellites, uh, medical imaging uh, techniques, etc. All of that will benefit uh, the society at large. That's great. So, I mean, we're talking about the origins of the universe, so it couldn't really be more profound the reasons behind the project. Uh, absolutely, yes. We'll, we'll be able to to use radio astronomy, the, ra the radio telescopes, to study hydrogen, which is the most common element in the universe, all the way back to the Big Bang. Uh, and we, we often refer to the SKA as a time machine, because we will be looking back in time to those first, first moments of the universe. Compared to an, the traditional telescopes, how exactly is SKA different? So, first of all, the sheer scale of the telescope, in order to detect the signature of hydrogen um, uh, in the early days of the, of the universe, we have to build uh, massive telescopes. Uh, and it's actually going to consist of two arrays, a collection of, of dishes, which will be at our site in South Africa, and a collection of what are called dipole antennas. They're the, the very sophisticated cousins of the old TV aerials we used to have, have on our, our houses. Yeah. So really the scale of this project is, is unprecedented. It is. Um, as I've said, just, just, just from the sheer number of, uh, of dishes and antennas, but also the distances over which it will be, be spread uh, in, the, in those two, two continents. Mm. When we're finished, which will be uh, in, in, in some years hence, we will be the largest scientific facility on Earth. I mean, a project uh, that's so ambitious must have uh, plenty of Technolo technological challenges. So what are the major challenges that have been faced? Um, there, there have been many, but, but let, let me pull out two. Uh, we're building the SKA in remote regions of the Earth, uh, inaccessible regions. So the sheer challenge of putting all this hardware in those areas is, is difficult. We have no, uh, we, we struggle to supply the power, so we have to have um, uh, very power efficient hardware. So that's, that's been one challenge. The other is the volumes of data. So the, the development of the digital signal processing and the computing power required to process this data has been a challenge, still is a challenge, and we're working very closely with industry. Uh, what about Huawei? How does Huawei fit in? So Huawei um, have not been involved in much of the design activities, but uh, with our colleagues at Shanghai um, Astronomical Observatory, uh, Huawei have developed the first of what we call uh, the SKA Regional Center. So this is a prototype uh, high-performance computing system uh, utilizing uh, uh, AI uh, techniques uh, to, to process uh, data for the astronomers far more rapidly than we've been able to do before. So this is a fantastic innovation uh, which is, is, is brand new and is key to enabling us to extract the science from the SKA. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Philip, for joining us. You're most welcome. It's been a pleasure. Yep. And that's all from us today at Huawei Connect Live 1 to 1. Thank you.